people don't like to talk about money, right? There's, there's four basic things that people don't like to talk about. There's politics, sex, money, and religion. People don't talk about that. Well, you, you, had to, you have to start getting real with your kids um, and start talking with them about things. So I'd, I'd heard a, um, I'm a very religious man. I heard one of the religious leaders that I subscribed to was, was, was talking and he had mentioned how he went off on a, on a uh, business trip. And he kind of felt, felt, felt kind of funny as, as he was traveling. And he got to his first layover. He, he, re, he got off the plane, went to a hospital, got checked in. They checked him out and said, you're good. You're, you're, you're fine. You're good to go. So he went back to the airport, took a little bit later flight. He and his wife in the air had uh, the captain come in over the, uh, the speaker asking him to hit his call light because they needed, needed to talk with him. Flight attendant came over and explained to him when they land, they're going to hold the plane and get him off immediately because there's an ambulance waiting for him. So when they landed, he gets off the plane, gets right into, gets you know, his met by paramedics at the gate. They haul him straight to the ambulance, get him straight to the hospital. He had two surgeons waiting. He said he w- he is a, um, he's basically had a pulmonary embolism and they needed to operate immediately. And at that point, he said, they said he was misdiagnosed at the last place. And they asked him, he says, is there anything in life you need to consider now is the time? So that hit me really hard. I and mean, it actually hits me hard now to even think about that because I got these four kids and I got things like, what do they know about life? What, what, what would happen if me and my wife were on the flight and, and it went down? Because I traveled a lot at the time. At the time, I, you know, I got 1.2 some odd million miles really saved up with American Airlines right now because I'm constantly in the air. This year, I haven't been. So I sat down with my kids. I told them that story. I said, well, guys, w- what do you need to know? And like, well, we don't know. And it's one of those we don't know what we don't know scenarios. So what I did is I just decided to crack open the books. I showed them, I showed them how, what money we had where, what investments we had where, where we were investing and why. And then I showed them my income. And the only drawback with the showing them my income is they all almost in unison said, then why the hell do we live here? So, you know, I got to say, it's like, um, you're not going to have a different lifestyle than I had growing up. And I grew up in some pretty humble, humble uh, uh, circumstances. I mean, my parents took very good care of us. They gave us the best they could of everything. They worked their guts out but I didn't want my kids to experience anything different. I said, later on, when you all move out, I'll buy that castle on the hill. And when you come visit, you'll meet me at Circle K, you'll put a hood on, and then you'll come up. You're never gonna know exactly where it is. I'm just showing up overnight. So with opening that up and showing them where things were, one, it really surprised them because they weren't, they did not believe we were where we were at financially. And then I wanted to talk to them about the investments and why I invested in those places. And then said, going forward, we're gonna have a family board. Um, now, we haven't invested as much lately. We've talked about our kids with certain things since those meetings. Uh, after the first of this year, I've kind of paused on a lot of it. And what I did was I, now we, we're buying two. We just bought two investments in the last month. But we do talk with them about everything. This is why we're looking at this. What do you think? And we let them vote on it. Um, we also had them all purchase. I, I bought six life insurance policies, the whole life infinite banking strategy. That's what we do for a living. Yeah, I love that. I love that concept. You know, and I think that that's the greatest concept in the world for people. If right, because you believe in the river flowing, and that's the only vehicle on earth that allows you to allow your money to move while it still continually earns uninterrupted compound interest. Exactly. So what we did is I took um, my first policy I purchased was ninety thousand. I put pulled eighty five out of it, put it to work in multiple properties, took the cash flows and ten percent of my ten percent of my income, which is what I build with, and I paid that down. As I'm paying it down, it went from $85,000 balance on that to 55. I pulled that 30, bought another one. Now the velocity is growing, right? So we can actually deploy more and more and more and more. We went from 80,000, 5,000 deployed to over a quarter million deployed in less than two and a half years. Yeah. And since I have a policy on each one of my children and they're all part of the trust. Now my children have to put aside 10% of their income every month to prove that they're on track to do what we need to do. So then when they get married, them and their spouse both get policies. I will help fund their policy right out of the gate. And then they have to maintain that policy and show if they're maintaining it. As long as they are, they will continue to be part of the trust.